welcome to another episode of Chatting with Stacks. I am your host, Bill Stacks, and today my guest is Anthony Luciano Ramundi, former enforcer for the Colombo crime family. Enjoy. So now they said, get him out here. Oh, Joe Colombo's man. Oh, shit, man. My cousin Matt. I see Scappy. I see fucking Alan. Wow, what the fuck is going on now? I just got pinched for numbers. He turns around. He says, now give him the stuff. He goes, give me the fuckers. Get the slips and get all the fucking. The detective gets gave him it. it. They gave him it back? Oh, yeah. Wait a minute. No, the detective gets it. And they go to hand it to Joe Colombo. He says, no, he goes, you hand it to him. The detective, he. I know what he, he, he did. The detective was eating his guts out. He says, you hand it to him. You took it from him. You fucking hand it to him. This detective, it ate him up on the inside. He said, I'm a kid. He had to hand me back everything. That's why Joe Colombo did. They gave it to me. I left. Joe Colombo says, all right. He goes, your round is done for the day. Come on, let's go down. He goes, here, have a seven and seven. I got fucking loaded. There. I know. Five, seven and seven. She goes, seven and seven. He got me fucking loaded. Yeah. <clears throat> now, now, my cousin Mac is teaching me how to drive. And he's got this big ass Electra 225 Limited. I'm driving. I'm hitting fucking cars. I'm banging into things. He's like, oh, you're, you're gonna hang him, and he tells me. <laughs> so we get rid of I banged up the car so much. He goes, we got rid of it. We gave it to Honey, and Honey chopped it up, and we got another car. And I'm driving. He gets me another Electra. Now I'm driving good. Now I know how to drive. I'm like going on 16. I got my routes. So now what happens, Joe Colombo says, I'm going to give you a route at a club. He goes, you're going to go there. You're going to pick up the money for the Shylock money with the book, with the number, the Shylock money with the records, the day number, the night number, the numbers, the horses, the bets on the horse, and the sports action. You're going to get the sheets and the money, bring it to here. He goes, this is your spot over there. It's okay, great. I mean, I'm 16 years old. I'm sitting in, it was called the Cadaver Club on 3rd Avenue between 85th and 86th Street in Brooklyn, in Bayridge, Brooklyn. Guys are coming in and giving me this stuff, and this is going good. Yeah. One day I'm in there, and this guy walks in. He's about 29 years old. And he tells the bartender, he goes, so who's taking all the action here? So I says, I am. I said, can I help you? He says, yeah. And so can I do for you? He takes out a gun, and he fucking cracks me across the head, pistol whips me. I mean, this guy gave me a fucking beating. I crawled out of the fucking place, literally. Crawled out. This guy almost fucking killed me. Have you? Did you notice uh, this uh, guy? Did huh? you notice him? You didn't know never him? Seen him? Never seen him before. First time I've ever seen him. I don't even remember how I made it into the car that I drove down to Cowell Street and I went to make a U-turn. I crashed right into the diplomat into the wall. Everybody comes running out. I'm all full of blood. They thought I got shot. They bring me up to Methodist Hospital and Dr. Leo took care of me. He said, no, he didn't get shot, but he got some fucking beaten. He says, what happened? So I told him what happened. He says, all right, recuperate over it. Don't worry about it. I was in the hospital about a week, maybe a little longer, give or take a day. <clears throat> they let me out. My cousin Mac picks me up. He goes, go home. He goes, I want you to relax in the house for a little while. All right, about four days later, I go by. He goes, how you feeling? I said, good. I'm all better. He goes, good. We're going down to 3rd Avenue. I go down to 3rd Avenue, and we're in uh, we're in Monty's, and Joe Colombo's there. He goes, come here. I want to talk to you. Shit, yeah, Joe, what? He goes, this guy that did this was this guy, Sally Burns, Sally Grinello. He's a cousin to the Grinellos. He's not the original one. He's a cousin, like a third cousin, because I'm going to have it taken care of. I said, Joe, I appreciate it. Thank you. He goes, don't even worry about it. With that, they're talking. My cousin, Mac goes, come here. I sit down. There's Mac. It was Jerry Lang. There was Scappy. Uh, Alley Boy was there and Lou Vincent. He says, listen, let me tell you something. He said, if Joe Colombo handles this to you, that means you're Joe Colombo's man, which means you can't do nothing without Joe Colombo's okay. And that means you can't get made. If he says you don't get made, you don't get made. I said, okay. I said, what do I do? He goes, but if you handle it, yourself any way you see fit they told me that means you belong here with us you're one of us when it comes your time you'll get you'll get your he says you'll get your button he goes but you'll be one of us you won't be that joe colombo owns you you're one of us that's okay yeah. with that i walk over to joe colombo he was talking with uh tom DeBella. i says uh, excuse me uh joe can i speak to you a second he says yeah what 
I said, Joe, I really appreciate the fact that you want to handle this for me. I said, but I feel that it's my spot down there. I got to handle it myself. He looks at me, he goes, are you sure? I said, I'm positive. I got to handle this myself. With that, he gets up, he gets up, he hugs me, he kisses me, he says, do whatever you want to do. You got the okay from me. Okay. That same day, I went over to Union Street and 30 Avenue. There was a bar there called Union Street Bar. My friend Sally D was in there. He was 16 years old also. His uncle Sally D, his father Joey D, and all of them, they had the bar. Then you had a cellar, and then you had a sub-basement. These guys were big in weapons. They could get you any type of weapon. I mean, you wanted a bazooka, they get you. You wanted a battleship, they get it for you. But they went to weapons and Shylock and everything. So I go see, I go see Joey D. He said, how you been? Good. I said, I'm talking. I says, listen, cuz. I said, I need a gun. He goes, what's the matter? I says, this thing with the Sally Burns. He goes, come on, let's go downstairs. We went down to the cellar, opened up the other door, going to the sub-basement. Opened up the fucking wall. I mean, the whole one. There must have been about 500 guns on the fucking wall. Yeah. There were guns I never knew were guns. I was like, what the fuck is that? That's a gun. That's a rifle. Okay. He goes, pick something up. I picked out a Beretta, a 380 Petro Beretta Model 84. I'll never forget this gun. 13 shots in the clip and one in the pipes, 14 shots, 380. He goes, come on, we got a, they had, in the basement there, they had a uh, a range, you know, like the pistol range. Yeah. Great box of bullets over. He goes, come on, he goes, let's try the gun out. So I go, he showed me how to load it and put it in. And I'm aiming, I'm shooting at the target. So he goes to me, he goes, cuz, you never shot a gun before? I says, no, why? Because you just wrapped off at fucking 13 rounds. He goes, you got like 12 of them in the fucking bullseye area. I said, I never shot a gun. I never shot. He was doing, we fired off 50 rounds. Out of 50 rounds, I got, I think it was 48 or 49 of them. I hit center mass. I was a natural with a gun. It just came like this, like that. It's just natural. With that, Sally D comes down. And Joey tells him what's going on. He says, Daddy, he goes, Auntie, you that yes, I, I never shot a gun before. I says, but it feels good. He gets the gun, puts it in the bag, a box of bullets. He goes, my gift to you. He says, you was in a good help. And about what the bag? He goes, you ain't paid for nothing. He goes, it's my gift to you. Yeah. I had the fucking paper bag. I'm walking from Union Street, the president to Cal Street, and my cousin Mac is there. He goes, you ready to go home? I says, yeah. I get in the car with him, and he's driving. He goes, what do you got in the bag? I pull out the fucking gun. Bang! He caught me off the side of the head. He goes, you put that fucking thing back in the bag. He goes, well, you got no permit to carry this. We well, are looking to get fucking pictures. What the fuck are you doing with anyway? I said, listen, I'm going down to 3rd Avenue. I'm going down to the club Friday night. And I'm taking this with me, you know, in case if there's a problem with this, Sally Burns, I can scare him. My cousin yeah. looked at me. He started scaring He said, you're going to scare him. I said, yeah. I said, okay. He goes, you sure you're going to scare him? I said, yeah. I go home, I'm pulling the action back on the gun, I'm taking it apart, I'm putting it together, I'm loading it, and I'm rejecting the shells, everything. Yeah. I mean, I knew this gun like the back of my hand. Friday night comes, I get all dressed, get in the car, and I drive down. Now, I remember, I'm still 16 years old, my cousin gave me the electric. I drive down to 3rd Avenue, everybody's in Monty's. They say, what are you doing? I said, oh, yeah, I came down here to get a quick drink or whatever. I said, I said yeah, I'm going out to Bay Ridge to sell this with this Sally Burns. Okay, go ahead. I get in the car, zip, I go out to 86th Street. Is Sally Burns with a family? Yeah, they were, they were with the Genovese family. Now, okay. there was Sally Burns, Frankie Burns, and Jimmy Burns. They were brothers and cousins. They all got whacked. They were all perverts. Then they had their sons. There was Sally Burns Jr. who got whacked. There was the cousin Jimmy Burns. There was another cousin, Sally Burns is the one I clipped. He was another cousin. He was like a third cousin. They kept the name Frankie, Jimmy, and Sally in the family. There was like fucking 90 of them with the same name. <laughs> yeah. I clipped I clipped the cousins like the third cousin. What happened was this guy was in prison, and he came out of prison after five years and thought who the fuck he was, and he was going to take over everything. Yeah. So when he heard about my spot down there, all right, so now... I park the car and I go to walk into the club and Dookie, the bartender's there. He's back there. He goes, Auntie, what are you doing here? I said, I came in here to settle things with Sally Burns. He goes, you know, you're fucking crazy. Ever since that thing, this guy's been in here. He robs the register. He's taking the Shylock money. Everybody's afraid of him. They're terrorizing him. I said, Dookie, don't worry about it. I said, I'm going to talk to him. I'm going to settle it. 
Now, when you walked into the Cadaver Club, you walked into the door, and there was a long bar. You went all the way down. There was a shelf over here in the bar, and then it made an L, turned this way. And there was a dance floor to the right, and there was tables and chairs. When I made the turn, I seen him. He was sitting down with his back to me. And there was a girl he was talking to, Karen Scusa. I'll never forget her. She came from my neighborhood. Tall, blonde, beautiful piece of work. The music was on. I seen She seen me, and I seen her bending down, and then the music went off, and I heard her say, Anthony's behind you. Meanwhile, I had the gun in my hand. Something just told me to take the gun out, and I had it at, the, at my side. This guy jumps up. You cocksucker, you motherfucker, what I tell you? I said, you come back here again, I'm going to kill you. I'm going to blow your fucking head off. Your mother's going to have a close coffin for you. Doors open his jacket, and he grabs the gun, puts his hand on the gun to pull it out. I just picked up my hand. I emptied the whole clip in him. Just emptied the whole clip. Didn't, whether I realized I did it or not, I just emptied the whole clip into him, put the gun back in the waistband, got in the car, went back down, go down to Cattle Street. Mm. I'm driving down, and I remember my cousin saying, get rid of the gun, break it apart, and throw it in the canal. So I'm, I go to Hamilton Avenue, park my car, cross on the other side, took it apart, threw it in the canal, get back in the car, boom, back to 3rd Avenue. Walk into the diplomat. And so where's everybody? He went down by Monty's. I walk in, everybody sees me. Oh, what's doing? What's going on? He says, I thought you were going to settle this thing with Sally Burns. I said, I did. That's what happened. I said, I shot him. They all looked at me. He said, you shot him? Yeah, I shot him. He said, what happened? Did you kill him? He said, yeah, I think he's dead. And they're all looking at me like, what the fuck? It's like, I'm, like I came from out of space. <laughs> what that Joe Colombo convinced me. He says, go down to the place and see what happened. So I'm sitting there, and we're talking, and Joe goes, give him a seven and seven. So I'm drinking it, and Joe goes, look at this fucking kid. I'll never forget what he said. He's, I'm looking at him. He said, look at this fucking kid. He just came in here and told us he killed the guy. He's cool, calm, and collected. It's like it doesn't phase him. It's like as if he's saying he just got laid for the first time. <laughs> so my cousin Mac looks at him. He says, that's my cousin. He says, let me tell you something. He says, they, they turned around and said, this kid, will be, as he gets older, he'll be a help to us if we go to fucking war again. Within an hour, Vincent comes back. And he says, well, what happened? He says, the guy, he's dead. He goes, you can't even tell if it's a guy or a girl. He goes, he blew his head completely off. He goes, he's got no head left. Anymore. He goes, he's dead. With that, Joe Colombo says, come on, get ready. You're going to the farm. They sent me up to this farm in Saugerties, New York. Yeah. A couple of weeks, days went by, whatever. Nothing happened, nothing happened. They bring me back down. At the uh, They brought me back down. It was like just before Thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. I start business up as usual. Shylock and bookmaking, Christmas trees, everything. November goes by, no problem. December, no problem. January, I'm sitting in the diplomat. Two detectives walk in. Anthony Ramondi, Luciano Ramondi. Yes, you're under arrest for the murder of Salvatore Burns. All right. Turn around, my cousins look at me, they give me the nod, I actually knew what was going to happen. They go, and they bring me down to the, they give me state charges. They bring me in. They got Abraham Brits comes in. They go before the judge. I get bail. They gave me $1 million bail. I'm 16 years old. They gave me a million dollar fucking bail. Yeah. P.S., to make a long story short, Abraham Brits makes a deal with the DA. A year and a half, I get four carrying an unlicensed weapon and discharging an unlicensed weapon in the city limits, a year and a half. Somehow, she grits, Abraham Grits knew everybody, and he had dirt on everybody. Okay, a year and a half. Okay, no problem. Let's make the deal. Okay, good. Mm -hmm. We'll make the deal. Now, I'm going down to turn myself in, and I'm in Jerry Lang's uh, Lincoln Continental. There's me. There's Jerry Lang. There was Joe Colombo. Uh, Scappy was in there. My cousin Mac was in there. And I think, uh, yeah, an alley boy was in there. We drive along 4th Avenue, go down Atlantic Avenue, make a left turn on Atlantic Avenue, make a right turn on Boring Place. As soon as we made the turn, four cars corner us. Boom. Guys come out with fucking guns. We knew it wasn't a hit because you seen the bed. Just pulled us all out of the car. Yeah. One guy goes, I got him, I got him here. Joe Colombo was yelling and cursing at them. I got him, we got him, ba, 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 we got him, we got him. You fucking got what? You're under arrest. Now, here's where you're going to be sitting down for this one. 
for the civil rights violation of Salvatore Burns. I says, civil rights violation? Said, the fucking guy's white. He's not black. He's not Puerto Rican. He's fucking white. How the yeah. fuck am I violating the civil rights? Here's what it comes down to. The federal government, now here's this. The feds took over from the state because the state, they couldn't do shit. So the state dropped the charges. But being I was under 24 years old, there's a law that the city, state, and feds have called the Youth Defenders Act. Yeah. They can't give me no more than seven years, on even on murder. All right? So that's how they made the deal with the state. Now, the yeah. feds could give me no more than seven years. But when they hit you with violation of his civil rights, that's 99 fucking years, no matter how old you are. Oh, how did I violate his civil rights? One, you caused it, I caused his death. Two, he can't grow old, okay? Three, he can't be with his wife. He can't earn money and take care of his family. He can't see his children grow up. He can't see his grandchildren. He can't, uh, whatever, have sex or whatever the fuck they call They say he can't get He can't get romantic with his wife. He can't grow old. He will never get Social Security. On and on and on. Yeah. I say, I'm fucked. Abraham Gritskis, don't worry about it. They get me. Get me out on bail. Bail is transferred over, and we're going to go to trial. So now he turns around. He says, "I have to bring in a specialist." I said, All right, who? He brings in William Kunzler. I'm sitting in the diplomat. I see this fucking nut guy comes walking in, two fucking briefcases under the arm, big fucking horn rim glaze on top of his head, eyebrows that look like they were fucking. They can be like octopuses. That look like they can grab your fucking hands for their like bozo. Who the <laughs> fuck is this? Nut? That's William Kunzler. I said, yeah. this guy's going to fucking represent me? They said, he's a genius. I said, he's a fucking nut. He looks like he said, he's a genius. We go to trial. And in the trial, he tells me, he says, listen. He says, you're going to get convicted. So what the fuck are we going to trial for? Why don't we make a deal? He says, listen to me. I got a rabbit I'm going to pull out of the hat. He says, trust me when I tell you. So I'm looking at him and I'm looking at him and I'm all right. Jury convicts me. Bam, one hour, in and out. Boom. Judge gives me 99 fucking years. They took me out of the courtroom that night. During the night, they shipped me to Atlanta. They didn't even make me wait a couple of days. Yeah. Consul said, he goes, I'll be there to see you in two days. I get there. I'm 16. I'm, no, I'm 17 now. I'm, yeah, I'm 16 now. I'm still 16. because I didn't become 17 until that year. They throw me in the hole. All right, now the whole you're in, you know, you're in your own eight by ten cell, toilet bowl. Okay, not even two days later, it was like the next day at night. Council comes walking in with Abraham Brits. They turn around, they tell me, "How'd you like to get out of here?" I look at them, you fucking kidding me? I said, "What do I got to kill?" Just like that, they tell me, "Just don't, don't talk like that." Don't talk. I said, "Yeah, how do I get out of here?" He says, "Listen, you ever hear of the Southeast Asian Conference?" I have no fucking idea what it is. He says, "All right, you joined the military." Do two years, everything goes good with you. This is wiped out. I says, yeah, sure. I signed it. I signed. Signed about 40 pages. So the MPs will be there tomorrow to pick you up. That night they left. It was about 11 30, 6 o'clock in the morning. I hear them calling me, get up. I see these two fucking guys walk in. About I'm 6'2, they're about six foot six. I mean, these guys are like fucking, they made Lou Faringo and Arnold Schwarzenegger look small. Yeah. They're like huge. Fuck and MP. And they say, please step away from the cage, Mr. Ramon. Please, okay. Would you please step out? Very polite. Yeah. They handcuff me. They take me and they're taking me down to Camp Lejeune. They're driving. Now, in the wagon that I was in, you had a driver, an escort, and then the two uh the two MPs. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm looking at these guys. I mean, these guys were fucking huge. Now we're driving and there's about maybe four or five hours we're on the road, whatever. And these guys, are, I want to go eat. Well, I want to eat here, blah, 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 blah. And they're arguing back and forth. So the guy says, yeah, we got a spot right there. Pull in, we're going to go eat over there. So the guy says, so I looked at the guy and says, can you do me one favor? And they looked at me and they says, well, what are you asking? So when we get out of the car, if you decide to go one way and you decide to go another way, can one of you unhandcuff me because I was handcuffed to the both of them? And then because if you both go in separate directions, you're going to split me in two. <laughs> the guy says, you know what? I'm going to do you a favor. 
I'm saying the only thing you could do for me is let me fucking go free. I'm saying to myself, yeah. <laughs> take the waist chain off. You're going to come in there and sit down like a regular person and eat with us. I looked at him. I said, you kidding me? He says, no, he says, but here's the but you try to escape. He goes, I will kill you. I said, listen, I, I'm down for a good meal. He goes, okay, fine. We went in, we sat at the table, no handcuffs, no nothing. I had fucking steak. I had fucking see. I had every fucking thing you think on the American face. Yeah. I'm gonna have. We go back in the car. They didn't even handcuff me in the car. They're talking to me like we're talking now. Yeah. So sorry, I just took a liking to me. Once we got, excuse me. Once we got to, uh, once we got to Camp June, they said we got a so I understand. They handcuffed me. They threw me in the uh, barracks that I had to be in, which was a barracks that was for like you know. Guys like me who were doing the time, but they, they had to sign the papers going to the military, right? Yeah. Well, that fucking morning, I mean, I hear, you motherfucking maggots, you cocksuckers, get up, you belong to me. Captain Emil Bass. I saw this guy, I says, whoa, there's going to be a problem with this fucking guy. He's asking everybody, you think you're a fucking tough guy? No, 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 he came up to me. I said, I said no, Captain, no, sir. Goes to the guy next to me. Oh, you think you're a tough guy? This fucking guy tells him, yeah. I looked at this yeah. guy. I said, you fucking stupid. And he turns around and tells me, he says, I want you guys to move away from him. All right, let me see how tough you are. This moron picks up his hand. Captain Bass fucking leveled him. Beat this guy so fucking bad that I put him in the infirmary. But they kept him in the thing. I says, oh, man. I says, and he goes, and you? Uh, me? Is I don't like you. I didn't say a word, because he was looking, I didn't say a word. You know, you think you're a fucking tough guy, you're a gangster because you killed somebody. He says, that don't mean a fucking thing over here to me. I'm saying to myself, okay, I'm saying keep your mouth shut. I said, go, this guy will do a number one new PS. We're doing basic training, right? Mm -hmm. Every time he's doing hand-to-hand -hand combat, guess who we kept calling? Me. You practice dummy. I was catching beatings legitimately as his practice dummy. <laughs> this went on for about a month. I mean, I had black and blues, black eyes. One day he did a real bad beating on me. My fucking eye was swollen out over here. My fucking lip down here was like that. And they put me on the ladder to clean off the corrugated iron roof, scrape it down. All right, I'm up on the ladder, I'm scraping it down. And I'm saying to myself, this mother, I'm saying, like, I'm thinking about how I can kill this guy. I'm being honest with you, seriously. Yeah. Walk up, walking over, I hear somebody call me. Get, it says, where's Captain Emil Bass? He says, you, up there. Come down here. And I come, I see, whoa, this guy's a fucking colonel. He goes, where's Captain Bass? I said, well, he's down over there. And he goes, he grabs me, puts his hand under my chin, goes like this to me. He goes, what happened to you? I said, I fell off the ladder the other day. He goes, you fell off the ladder? I said, yes, sir. I fell off the ladder, sir. He goes, nobody hit you? I said, no, sir. I said, I fell off the ladder. He goes, then what are you doing? I said, well, I feel good. And I said, you know, I don't want to lay up in bed. He goes, okay. He goes, continue what you were doing. Now, about maybe, I don't know, maybe five, ten minutes go by. I hear Monday down front and center. I turn around. I see Captain Bass with this, uh, with this colonel. I said, oh, man. I said, I guarantee, I said, this colonel probably fucked him. You beat him up. Or he said, yeah. I'm saying, I'm fucked. Yeah. I come down, standing there, and he goes, Captain Bass, your man told me he fell off the ladder, put him on bed rest for a week. And I'm, I'm saying, oh, thank you, God. I said, go to this yeah. guy. He goes, go to the barracks. I said, okay. I go to the barracks, and I'm laying down maybe about an hour or so, I hear the door open, slam shut, and I hear like the heavy footsteps of a guy walking. I thought, I said, oh, fuck. I said, it's Captain Bass. Now, there's it's nobody him, in the back. Yeah. I get up, and I stand at attention. He goes, at ease. He goes, sit down. I want to talk to you. And I'm saying to myself, this motherfucker's going to kill me. I said, he's going to kill me. He goes, I want to ask you a question. I said, he goes, why didn't you tell the colonel that I hate you? I said, it's Captain I said, all due respect. I said, you never hit me. I said, I fell off the ladder. 
He goes, I'm going to ask you again. Why the fuck didn't you tell him that I fucking hit you? I says, Captain, again, with all due respects and not showing you any disrespect, maybe somebody else you're talking about, but I fell off the ladder. I says, and besides, I don't rat on guys. If I got a problem with a guy, we just handle it our own way. I said, but I fell off the ladder. So he looked at me and he goes, a week. He goes, you can walk anywhere you want on the compound, no job for you in a week. I said, okay. Then I would see him on the compound. He would come on, come with me. And I'd go here and there with him and saying, what the fuck's with this guy? When they were training the guys, he had me on the site. He used to train me separate. I became his prize fucking pupil. Because yeah. I didn't rat on him. This guy took me under his fucking wing. I was, I was like his son. Yeah, this guy like his... taught me so much shit how to kill. I could kill a person with a paperclip. That's yeah. what this guy taught me. All right. That's how this guy. But this guy, they figured this guy had at least 2,000 confirmed kills. You know what you're talking wow. about? 2,000 confirmed kills. That's under crazy. his wing personally. With this guy, I made sharpshooter, I made sniper, and I made uh 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 um what the fuck was that a sharpshooter sniper, and um uh, I forgot the other one uh sharpshooter sniper, I forgot the other one. I made it all in one day, and I became a fucking sniper. That's how good I was with this guy. Wow. He taught me how to fight with the hands, with a knife, handgun, how to shoot the rifle. I mean, you name it, he taught me, and he was with me all the while I was in Nam. Yeah. He was with me all the while that I was in Nam. Yeah. This guy was unbelievable. Oh, Marksman. That was it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Sniper. Marksman. I made all three of them in one day. All three in one day I made, thanks to this guy, the way he taught me. And me and him became best of friends. But hey, he was gonna with take, me all the while. When I, we're going to, we got to take a, right? a little break. We got to take a little break. And, uh, mm -hmm. but we'll be back right after this. Okay.